There's nothing like jumping back into an old world like Gelinor after almost a decade of not playing. And that is what we are here to do today. I've been inspired by the YouTube series that I've been watching lately to make my own old school RuneScape account with some restrictions. If you caught the account name at the beginning of the video and you're familiar with some of the different restrictions that players put on accounts, you might be able to piece this one together for yourself. When it comes to accounts with restrictions in old school RuneScape, the two most important things are the rules and the goals. So for those of you who are less familiar with the concept, let's go ahead and break them down now. The first goal of this account is what's called free to play to bond. And that's where you try to earn membership with only in-game currency. This is kind of the account type that got me interested in playing again. I like that you can start as free to play and you have a very obvious goal to work towards. The next account restriction is Chunkman. If you didn't know, the old school RuneScape world is built out of chunks. This account type is not allowed to leave the chunk that they start in until they've completed every possible task with what's available inside of that one chunk. There are a few different rule sets for Chunkman accounts, the most notable being Vanilla, Extreme, and Supreme. I'll be taking a pretty extreme route even though I won't be making an Iron Man account because of what comes next. Lucky for you, you don't have to wait long to find out what comes next. And that is that we're going to be flipping once we unlock the Grand Exchange chunk. We're not starting there. The first goal is to make it there and then use flipping to get the money to buy membership. There aren't many specific rules to free to play to bond or flipping. The only thing I will mention is that I'm going to be playing like an Iron Man even though my account will not be one. So I won't be asking for items or picking things up off the ground that other players have dropped. Here's the rules that I'll be using for the Chunk Man side of the account. I took the extreme rule set and tweaked it ever so slightly, and I will be including drop tables, which a lot of people don't do, although I won't be using the rare drop table because that's where the meme drops usually are. The reason there's a question mark by skill capes is because they're only available to members, and seeing as my first goal is to get to the Grand Exchange and unlock membership with a bond, that would basically mean that once I get there, I won't be unlocking a chunk ever again possibly, or at least for a very long time. And this will make even more sense when you see what chunk I'm starting in. If you have any ideas for how I can include skill capes without destroying my account, go ahead and drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear your ideas. And before we get on to where I'm starting, I want to do a few shoutouts. This account wouldn't exist if it wasn't for these guys because they are the people I've been watching and have inspired me to make this account. They would be Limpwort, Verf, and Flipping Old School. I will link their content down in the description. If you haven't seen their stuff, go check them out. They're very entertaining and the content is great as well. And with all of the goals and rules out of the way, we can finally go over which chunk we're going to be starting in. And for that, I have a little test of your RuneScape knowledge. The music track that you unlock in this chunk is playing in the background right now. So go ahead and take a listen and leave your guess in the comments. I will see you on the other side. Surprise! It's the most boring chunk of all time to start in, Mud Skipper Point. Before you click away because now this whole video seems like a joke, I will tell you there was a reason behind picking this chunk. Since the ultimate goal is to get to the Grand Exchange and gain membership through bonds, I thought it would be cool to start in a place that fit the theme. So the basic backstory is we were traveling by boat and we crashed and we washed up on Mudskipper Point. And that brings us to the here and now with nothing to our name and everything to prove. One rule I forgot to go over earlier is that we will be randomly unlocking chunks and not choosing them. But as you can see from this screenshot, we can't actually get into that chunk to our northeast, so we will just be taking the north chunk. So finally, we have our first set of chunk tasks. The only official chunk task here is to kill a giant rat, but because they have a 100% drop rate on bones and raw beef, I decided to add the goblin drop table. They do technically spawn in the Remington chunk, but they wander in here often enough, and I wanted something to do in at least the second chunk since there wasn't anything to do in the first one. 
For a standard RuneScape account, this couldn't really be a bigger joke. But for what we have available, it actually is quite annoying. The only food source in this chunk is from the giant rats, which are just as hard to kill as the goblins, and I don't have the ability to make a fire. This means that when my health inevitably gets down to one, I have to go stand in the church and heal. And with an amazingly fast one hit point per minute default regen rate, this was less than ideal. There were times when I would cry, and I thought, this is the end. But it turns out I'm stronger than that. So we're back. And the clip you're seeing in the background here is me realizing that if someone leaves the jail door open, the small rats can get out. I don't even think they can hurt you and they're pretty much just free experience. So when my health was really low, I started hopping worlds and looking for these small rats that were wandering into my junk. Ooh, so strong. Here we are, punching goblins in the face, taking them down one at a time, level 3 attack. I am prayer flicking thick skin. This has to be the most embarrassing thing that anyone has ever done, but we are gonna just keep at it. Ooh. And we got ourselves one of the items from the list, the best in slot, bronze square shield. Maybe this will improve our luck. What we gonna get? What we gonna get? What we gonna get? Okay. The air talisman. One of the more annoying things that we had to get. 1 in 28. Ugh. 1 and 128 drop chance. Done. Just partaking in some frivolous activities. I have a little tradition where I get my prayer levels in the church when I remember. I'm trying to get this person to pose with me because there happens to be someone here. And. Ooh. Good. We're gonna take that. I did ask them, they didn't respond, but we're just gonna pretend like they did that for us. And that's level five prayer. So that's gonna start making these trips last a little bit longer. We have an amazingly action-packed clip here. It got cut off, but as you can see from the inventory, we picked up the bronze bolts. So that's another item off the list. And then after a little bit of lag and some more punching, because that's what we do, we actually get another drop of bronze bolts immediately after. So if it wasn't done the first time, it's done now. Coming up on a little side goal that I had set for this chunk, since I knew we'd be doing a decent amount of combat, I was hoping to get out of here with base tens and all of the different combat styles. And when we punch again, we will have achieved that goal. So that's uh, level 10 in attack, and as you can see here, that gives us level 10 in each of the three. Welcome to another cutoff clip, because I'm a noob. As you can see, we have kicked and punched enough goblins to complete the drop table. We are at 131 total, and that is the brass necklace, which was the last thing that we were hunting. As you can see from this not at all blurry screenshot, we had to kill 184 goblins to finish the drop table, and the one giant rat of course. And with that we have completed all of the chunk tasks. The bronze square shield, bronze bolts, beginner clue scroll, brass necklace, and air talisman, most of which are completely useless to us, but they had to be done, so we did them. And if you would all please join me in my new favorite location in all of Old School Rooms Gabe, The Church, for a quick celebration. <clears throat> I might have gotten a bit carried away there. Anyway, back to the business end of things. Now that we've completed the drop table for the goblin, we are ready to roll our next chunk. 
notable features here. We'll go over them in more detail in just a second, but just taking a quick look at the chunk picker map. Chunk number one has the entrance to the Asgarnian dice engine on it. So that would be a lot of drop hunting and a lot of combat levels gained. And we'd have to do all that with no food source. Chunk number two presents more of a skilling grind. There's a bronze axe there and a small mine. So we'd have to get level 40 mining to mine some gold. And there's also a few NPCs there. So some drop tables there as well, but definitely less combat focused. As promised, a more detailed look, we came to this spot in between both of the chunks we could possibly roll to examine them. The Remington chunk would have us get level 40 mining to mine the gold ore, along with drop tables from Anha and Hingle, who you can murder over and over again in their house, it's kind of weird, but we'd have to get the Chaos Rune, Cabbage, Iron Dagger, Bronze Medhelm, so really not much of a gear upgrade from this chunk. And the Asgarnian Ice Dungeon, like I said, presents a lot of combat material. We would have to get level 20 attack and defense to wield some of the Mithril drops, along with Iron Plate Body and Legs. A Mithril Ore and Banana would be 1 in 128 drops to hunt, and Death and Cosmic Runes at the same drop rate. This dungeon does actually scale very well. It has everything from a level 6 mugger spawn to level 57 ice warrior spawn, but it would still be quite a grind to finish all the drop tables. I've decided to save the trunk rolling for the beginning of episode 2. I'm sure you're all YouTube pros by now, but quick reminder, if you want to follow along with the series, please drop a like and subscribe to get notified when the next episode drops. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.